Hi there. Recently I purchased a remarkable piece of hardware called the LoopTech Live uh, to use with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 which I usually play every now and then. Uh, you can see that device uh, on the right hand side bottom right hand side corner of the screen. Uh, please excuse the quality of the webcam. Uh, basically, this device is a, a programmable device with which you can simulate virtually the entire flight deck um, or the cockpit of an aircraft. Uh, there is already a profile available for a Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 on the Loop Deck marketplace. Uh, there is also a nice video by Sim Hanger Flight Simulation describing this uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator profile available on the Loop Deck marketplace. I leave a link in the description below. Uh, however, I found the profile to be geared towards the simulator uh, somewhat uh, generically, uh, meaning it's made for planes that are bundled with the simulator. Uh, I find the auto I found the autopilot in the profile somewhat finicky for custom aircrafts like the fly-by-wire A320neo. However, in the last part of Simhanger's video, he talks about configuring the loop deck live as a MIDI device and use it with SpadNext. Uh, taking that as the starting point, I downloaded SpadNext and started experimenting with loop deck live and SpadNext. Uh, my main requirement was to simulate the flight control unit of the fly-by-wire A320neo. As it is difficult to use the mouse while the plane is moving or if turbulent, turbulence hits. I'll try to explain how to configure the buttons and knobs of an aircraft cockpit in this video. I mean, I'm going to take the fly-by-wire A320neo as the example, as an example, uh, because that's what I have been experimenting with. Uh, uh, please excuse the quality of the webcam and also of the video. This is my first YouTube video where I am using my voice for commentary. Also, English is not my first language or mother tongue, so you'll have to pardon my errors of language and pronunciation. Uh, with that disclaimer out of the way, uh, let's get straight into it. <coughs> okay, so uh, what is... Uh, okay, so uh, Loop Deck Live already uh, comes with a, a Microsoft Flight Simulator profile in the marketplace, so it looks uh, somewhat like this okay you have uh, autopilot this is a folder so if you go into it you will get although it will not show in the loop deck software uh, if you go into it you will get something uh, something like speed autopilot altitude etc <laughs> basic autopilot controls uh, uh, but uh, while trying to use this in the flyby where um, a320 neo i I found that some of the knobs, at least the heading knob or the speed knob was not working. So, you know, kind of unusable, although uh, I was able to use it in the Cessna. Okay, so, okay, now coming to SPAD next. Okay, okay, this, I, I was not familiar with this uh, software. I just heard this in sim hangers video so uh, while experimenting with this i found this to be a remarkable piece of software which can connect your custom hardware to uh, to the flight simulator uh, this is actually a, a paid software uh, you get 14 days free trial to check if this if spad next uh, works for you uh, if it works for you you need to purchase it but i think it's uh, for uh, uh, you know for the things that it provides i think uh, the price is well worth it uh, so uh, this is the uh, video by simanga flight simulation so i'll put a link in the description below uh, 
was pad next okay i think um, uh, this microsoft flight simulator version will do i mean that that's about 25 euros <coughs> uh, okay uh, so one thing is that when uh, you install spad next it will go through uh, an installation wizard uh, so let's see here configuration wizard so basically whatever the you know default suggestions it gives we just run through that and uh, it will get installed <coughs> uh, one thing is that uh, you need to also install this uh, plugin which is highlighted in this second button install spad next spad next elvar bridge for msfs so it will not be installed by default you need to install it uh, certain other things also you need to enable uh, okay application settings uh, let's just run through them mm, okay simulations okay uh, this sim connect support i guess when you are running through the configuration wizard uh, it should prompt you to enable this one this lvar support uh, you need to explicitly enable uh, without this uh, custom hardware custom aircraft like the fly by wire a320 neo won't work uh, because uh, they export uh, you know a custom interface uh, with which spadnex uh, need to talk uh, so you need to enable this uh, manually uh, other than that uh, devices okay you need to enable uh, this midi support because loop deck live will appear as a, a midi device will present itself as a midi device to spad next so spad next need to be able to you know interface with midi devices so this support needs to be enabled so okay last time i checked i uh, did not need to enable these two options input loop deck live and output loop deck live but it seems to have been enabled automatically if not pro probably you can enable them uh, other devices uh, okay i think that's about it uh, as far as installation and configuration goes and status okay so uh, loop deck needs to be connected to the simulator so when the simulator is running so uh, spad next will display the version of the microsoft flight simulator uh, that is currently running uh, so when spad next is not connected to the simulator this uh, this microsoft uh, version string will be blank okay so if this this portion is blank you know that uh, that spad next is not yet connected to microsoft flight simulator so if this is populated then uh, we are all set good to go uh, okay <clears throat> now uh, this tab actually lists the hardware that spad next recognizes so i have this tca a320 a320 copilot uh, i have this tca quadrant and i have this uh, thrustmaster rudder and there is also a controller so all these uh, four hardware uh, items uh, spad next has recognized i also have a loop deck connected uh, to my computer but uh, i don't think there is any support for loop deck hardware as such in spad next uh, however when we enable uh, midi support in uh, in spad next then uh, spad next is able to recognize uh, the loop deck live as a you know midi source so you can see i have already configured a certain number of buttons and you know rotary dials in loop deck and uh, uh, spad next has already recognized uh, whatever i have configured 
as a you know, MIDI button and a MIDI dial in uh, in loop deck live. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll go ahead and see how to configure these buttons and dials uh, and how to you know when these buttons are pressed or the dials are moved. Uh, rotated um, how to you know send those events uh, to a custom aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator okay so what is pad next actually <clears throat> if you look at it pad next is just a, a, a signal translator okay so uh, it recognizes the signals that your hardware produces and uh, which your hardware generates and then translates those signals into signals that your flight simulator recognizes okay so uh, so spadnex needs to be configured to recognize your hardware input signals and also it has to be configured to generate uh, the simulator signals, uh, the signals that the uh, simulator can recognize. So it is just a you know signal translation software <laughs> from your hardware device to your uh, simulator. Uh, <clears throat> now the thing is that uh, uh, what I found, okay, so I I, I did all these uh, R and D in you know the past week, so I'm not very familiar with uh, the entire thing but i just found out enough to make things work okay at least the flight control unit you know how to you know use the loop deck for uh, the fly by wire a320 uh, flight control unit so 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 what happens is that your uh, uh, custom aircrafts okay that you you know use in the flight simulator they export uh, you know signal interface okay some interface uh, which some external software can use to send uh, um, some some signals to control the aircraft so so basically what type of signals a custom uh, aircraft export so here uh, i listed uh, there are two kinds of signals one is a custom event and the other is the custom value okay so the values can also be called variables because those values can be changed okay so if we go and search uh, in google for uh, a uh, fly by wire a 320nx uh, api so if we just just go and search something like uh, A320 and X API. So you will get this get this page. So as I said before, so there are two kinds of you know interfaces. One is this uh, custom values or LVARs and the other is custom events. <coughs> so it will list uh, all the you know custom events and the custom values uh, that an external software can send or is able to set okay uh, so for flight control unit control uh, flight control unit so you see for this flight control unit panel there are various events and values that can be you know sent to the simulator and it will be picked up by the uh, fly by wire a320 new aircraft uh, so you see for the speed knob there are certain events and values for the heading knob there are again a few uh, values and events so what we are going to do today is you know try to you know uh, try to prog uh, try to program the uh, altitude knob okay so we want to do like uh, increase and decrease the altitude we can we should be able to set managed altitude mode we should be able to set selected altitude mode so here we see okay 
uh, we uh, we can see uh, some of the custom event for increasing the so if you send this event uh, the altitude uh, you know setting and the altitude value will increase in the fcu if you send this event the altitude value will decrease uh, then if you send this event it will be it will simulate a, a, a button push for the altitude knob which will be to set the managed altitude mode and if you send this event it will simulate a you know button pull and it, it will set the selected altitude mode so all these uh, these four items these four events uh, these are actually events custom events uh, we'll look at we'll look at uh, setting values later uh, basically when we uh, when we uh, try to program the landing system button we'll see how we can set a value but for now let us try to program uh, these buttons in our loop deck lives uh, so that we can get this functionality uh okay 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 what else so i had already written a few things okay button sending so we are going to see how to pro uh, program button sending custom events button sending custom values and how to program rotary knobs okay fine uh okay so here you can see that already i have programmed uh, the loop deck live buttons and dials but uh, we'll program some more of them so that we can see how how we can do that okay loop deck live. okay this is the interface so what you can do is uh, from this uh, microsoft flight simulator profile that you get from loop deck marketplace you can just create a empty profile so i have already created one profile uh, and populated with uh, some buttons and knobs of the fcu uh, so here is this one so as you can see i have already uh, programmed it with the altitude knob altitude knob push altitude knob pull heading knob heading knob pull heading knob push and speed as well as for the uh, vertical speed uh, also i have programmed uh, uh, button for landing system and loc and approach okay so th these are the basic fcu functionalities that i require okay so i don't like to do i don't like to use my mouse uh, on the fcu panel that's kind of very you know fidgety <laughs> while the plane is moving so so this uh, if i can do that with a you know with a hardware uh, so that works best for me <clears throat> anyway so what we will do here is okay uh, so what first let us go ahead and remove all these uh, bindings so that we can again uh, create them uh, for demonstration purpose so just we'll remove this rotary altitude binding we'll remove this altitude so uh, this is the altitude uh, step you know toggle so uh, either you increase by thousands or hundreds so once you push it will increase by hundreds Another, another time you push it will increase by thousands or increase or decrease the altitude will increase or decrease by thousands when you turn the altitude knob so anyway we'll try to program this okay we'll unassign altitude push unassign altitude push pull unassign so this landing system button it will be a, a bit different way uh, in which this button uh, in which this button is programmed basically all the other buttons are programmed by sending custom events this one is programmed by setting a <coughs> custom value or custom variable so we'll try to see this okay so let us try to create
create these buttons again so already some of these buttons that i have created so basically what happens is that when you create a particular button or a knob it sends a midi signal of this um, uh, loop deck life sends a midi signal you can configure what type of uh, midi signal or a particular type of tone you want to send out so there i mean you can configure uh, a lot of different you know uh, midi signal output on loop deck life so in that way this is you know remarkably uh, you know a remark uh, a remarkable device in the way it generates a large number of midi signals <laughs> so we'll try to create some more uh, buttons uh, and also some more dials okay so first uh, let us create a dial adjustment for the altitude knob okay let us give a new name L T I altitude okay so so for program change I randomly selected CC set I am not very sure what what that does in a you know MIDI signal generator or MIDI device uh, so you can select uh, various things or various other knobs that might be available in a MIDI device. Uh, okay, so I have already used general purpose controller one, two, three, four for the other knobs. So let us try foot controller here. Okay, so I'll just put a random value 10 and I'll do a save okay so here is the new rotary uh, dial function that has been created now let us uh, assign it to this dial on which I had freed up the already programmed altitude functionality so let us put it here okay so now this rotary dial functionality has been uh, programmed on this dial uh, and it will send a signal which is a foot controller with whatever value 10 and on one channel so I am not sure what are these as long as these are unique signals that's all that it matters and Spadnex should be able to recognize this signal so <clears throat> going back to Spadnex so what happens is that if uh, if a new button is pressed or a new dial is uh, rotated on your MIDI device, then uh, your Spadnex should be able to recognize it and populate that new button or the new dial. So let us try and move this newly configured dial. So as we can see, a new dial has been populated on the Spadnex uh, MIDI device. Uh, Usually what happens is that if you uh, enable, if you click on this programming mode, uh, your, uh, this particular arrow should automatically go to the button or the dial uh, that, that you are moving on your MIDI device. But however, it doesn't seem to be doing that here for the dials. I guess for dials, you need to, you need to find out uh, which dial you are moving uh, because it will show the dial movement on spad next and then you click on the dial and and then you should be able to you know so spad next has now recognized the signal coming from the midi device now you need to uh, send on you know when that signal is generated by the midi device uh, spad next should be able to generate a particular signal to your uh, flight simulator so you can do that via this add event so so for dials there are basically I have used two kinds of you know signals that uh, Spadnex can recognize that is since this is a uh, since Spadnex is recognized that it is a dial on the MIDI device either you can turn the dial clockwise or you can turn the dial counterclockwise so for each of these uh, two signals produced by 
the MIDI device, we will create uh, two different signals that uh, can be sent to the uh, flight simulator. Okay, the, the A320 Neo FCU. So when we turn it clockwise, uh, the the height set uh, the height value should increase. Uh, and when we turn it counterclockwise, the uh, the altitude value should decrease. Okay. So basically, when we uh, let us try to program clockwise, uh, turning the knob clockwise. So this dialog box. Uh, comes up so we will do an add action now what is the action uh, that we need to send to the flight simulator basically to the to a320 uh, neo uh, so we need to refer to the api page that we had opened earlier so here in the flight con uh, flight control unit panel for the altitude knob uh, we want to increase the altitude setting okay so we'll copy this this particular uh, event this is a custom event so basically uh, add action so so this is not a value this is an event so we'll send an event and then we'll search okay so this one seems to be a 320 fcu alt inc so we'll click this one okay i uh, don't need to fill fill the other other values just click okay and we'll just click this end processing okay so for uh for each button or a button that you press on your MIDI device or a knob that you rotate, uh, there can be multiple events that you can send. But here we just want to send one event. Okay, when you um, rotate the dial clockwise, your altitude value should increase. So that should be the only one event that that is the last event. So we'll do an end processing with one event and uh, fine. So we'll just click OK. So so it has created one event for a clockwise turn for this new rotary dial that we have programmed in loop deck live so it will when that uh, dial is turned clockwise it will send this particular a320 a32nx underscore fcu underscore alt underscore inc event to the flight simulator and the and uh, our uh, aircraft uh, Flight by wire A320 Neo should be able to recognize that this event is for uh, for this particular aircraft and should be able to consume that event. Okay, so now we'll program the counterclockwise turn for decreasing the altitude uh, value. Uh, so again, add event uh, custom. Okay, so there is a counterclockwise uh, turn. So add action. Now, what is the action we want to add? This is the A320 FCU alt decrease. That is a custom event. So we'll just copy this one. And add action. This is not a value. This is a send a simulation event. Okay, search for this. So we have A320 FCU alt decrease. Okay, so okay fine okay and processing okay so now for this dial uh, rotary knob we have uh, two events one for clockwise turn for increasing the altitude value and for a counterclockwise turn for decreasing the altitude value now let's test it test this out uh, in the simulator whether it is working or not so okay so
just try to program the you know push button and pull button you know try to simulate uh, push button and pull button uh, for this uh, altitude knob so again uh, if we go to the uh, flyber a320nx uh, api we can see that for push there is an custom event and also for the you know button pull there is a custom event so let us program <coughs> uh, two buttons on the loop deck live for one for altitude push managed mode set and for another for altitude pull uh, selected mode a set okay so let us go to loop deck live okay now will not be uh, although you know you uh, you can program the rotary dial on the loop deck live for a push button there is no pull button okay so i usually don't actually use uh, i don't actually program the push button uh, you know in the rotary dials because while pushing the button you might inadvertently you know you know kind of uh, move the knob and it will kind of uh, you know uh, it will you know change the uh, value of the knob uh, that inadvertent change of value might happen so i keep it keep the you know push button uh, you know i don't map anything to the uh, rotary dial push button instead i use uh, i program one of the soft buttons on the loop deck okay so let us program the uh, altitude push button and the altitude pull button you know functionality on these uh, on these two soft buttons so how do we go about doing that okay so for using the soft buttons we use this midi action uh, so let us give a new name or tt push okay altitude push so i have already used a certain number of so basically what we'll do is we'll with the sort button push we'll make the loop deck uh, live send out a note so i have already used a certain number of notes i i think okay let's just check okay okay let's let's just check what are the notes that we have used c1 b1 c1 b1 c0 d0 f0 e1 e1 okay uh, maybe we'll try to see the action the action altitude push okay note play okay what are the uh, okay let's start with a2 velocity just give some velocity i don't know what this does duration 100 milliseconds one channel okay save now we're going to pick another for pull with LTMT altitude pull a2 now let's say b2 b2 is there a b2 there mm. okay b2 100 100 save now let's put these functionalities on the soft button uh, alt altitude push on the first one altitude pull on the second one okay now let's go to spad next and see if spad next can, can recognize these new buttons on the midi device so okay we'll save this profile first uh, now we'll go into the enable programming mode and 
let's do that altitude push okay so it has recognized a new button has been pushed and it has already populated the new button so now we'll disable the programming mode so that uh, it doesn't change to another button so we'll do an add event when the button is pressed what is the action we want to send and the action we want to send is uh, push okay this one this is a custom event uh, altitude knob button push copy okay add action this is a event uh, okay control v button push okay okay and processing okay fine so this button has been programmed for altitude knob button push and now let me push the other button save this profile enable programming mode now press the altitude pull it has recognized the altitude pull as a new button now I'll disable the programming mode add an event when the button is pressed okay what is the action we want this altitude pull event to be sent <coughs> to the fly-by-wire aircraft oh sorry not this one to copy this altitude pull so add action send simulation event search for this event so a320 fc alt pull okay okay yes okay now i don't think while on the ground we'll be able to see any difference i think we need to take the plane uh, we need to take the plane in uh, uh, in air to actually use that pull and push altitude button just let me see live create another soft button for altitude increment or teach a media action altitude increment c2 let's play the note c2 for altitude increment uh, altitude okay c where is C2? C2 100 100 save so put this on the third soft button go to SPAD next enable programming mode ok it got the new button add event when the button is pressed go to the a320 go to the a320 so <coughs> now need to altitude increment which one okay so this one okay a3 a32nx fcu alt increment toggle so toggle between toggle between hundreds and thousands <coughs> altitude increment and decrement so other ones don't seem to be appropriate so this one seems to be the most appropriate and this is a custom event so for toggling this we'll just try to set this event and see if this works uh, okay 
add action not a data value this is a custom event and and here okay this event is here set this one okay and processing okay now just let us let us see if this toggles the increment uh, modes the buttons that all the buttons and dials that we have shown till now all these are uh, all these were custom events so basically uh, we were you know sending custom events to the aircraft now we'll see this ls button we need to actually set a custom value or change the value of the variable okay so basically this is also a toggle basically between 0 and 1 button on and button off uh, so that ls button let's search for the ls button ls let's see ls landing system so this is in the efis control panel so we want to set the captain side ls button so this is a button ls1 filter active so this is a custom l var basically this is a value that we have to set this is not an event uh, so anyway let us try to program another soft key in loop deck live and try to uh, assign this uh, try to toggle this variable value on button push uh, so here let's 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 try to program another midi action so captain ls okay so send another midi tone let let this be d2 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 100 100 save captain ls okay now go to spad next enable programming mode uh, captain ls so yeah it recognized the new button now we need to okay let's go back to the api and copy that variable name okay captain ls this is okay this is the values are 0 and 1 okay copy so add an event uh, when the button is pressed uh, add an action now this time we are going to change a data value okay, let's try to search for this value button ls filter active it is there but suppose if it is not there okay so how do we i mean last time i could not find it so let us see another way how to you know how to know the name uh, name of the value or the variable uh, how to find out the name of the value of the variable when a certain button is pressed okay uh, so let's try to see how to do that okay let us uh, cancel this one and then go to configuration 
Uh, okay, okay, contribution online, add ons, controls, MIDI device, on run profile, edit. devices uh, support status uh, can't figure out where did I see this okay okay so on this tab on this tab we want to see event monitor data monitor we want to see the data monitor uh, data monitor then we want to click L bars okay All right must be on okay we need to enable that again I, don't I think the spad next crashed for some reason uh, anyway uh, so here let's move this and data monitor uh, add l bar so it'll error initializing height must be non called by system window thread dispatch uh, not sure what is causing why it is caused by this okay let me try to open this in the other monitor and see seems there's some more work to be done or might need to uh, <coughs> submit a bug report let's see put this This is the MIDI device. So this is the Captain LS add event button pressed. Add action, change a data value, search for this one. Okay, now we want to set this value. Okay. What is the operation that we want to do? We this is a toggle button switch on switch off so this seems the most appropriate toggle bit okay there is no static value limits no limits okay and processing okay fine now let us see if we are able to toggle this ls button
just try to do that uh, main menu continue okay go to world map select get quick departure Heathrow arrival so that's my favorite route for uh, morning drive uh, anyway uh, 10 a.m. low altitude airways runway 08R arrival ILS 09L and uh, basically we want to fly Yeah, I have turned down the music volume to zero, you know. Anyway, I mean, just so that, you know, my voice comes through. <clears throat> uh, just quick and dirty takeoff, okay. But uh, please prepare for takeoff. So here you try to decrease the altitude to 5000.
by mistake I had put the flaps to you and it should have been on. Point deck, ladies and gentlemen. As you may have noticed, we have begun our initial descent down to our destination. Now would be a good time to wrap up any business you need to take care of as we prepare for our approach. If you are up, once you return to your seat, we ask that you remain seated until the aircraft arrives safely at the gate. Flight attendants, please prepare the cabin for a ride. Yeah, so if you move to open descent, you can select it. to program uh, an aircraft uh, aircraft uh, cockpit panel or an aircraft flight deck I, I think virtually you can program the entire cockpit of the aircraft if you have the aircraft API available to you and use the loop deck live as a you know virtual cockpit thanks thanks again if you have been uh, with me so far uh, you can hit the like button and subscribe if you want to thanks again <clears throat>